The next area that I would like to touch upon is auto enrolment. You may well have received communications from uh, the pension regulator, or you may well have seen uh, TV advertisements on the subject going forward. So in terms of, of businesses, the things that I think that you, you are going to find most beneficial is to just really to find out what it is, what it's all about, what it is that you have to do, uh, and the bottom line for a lot of businesses will be how much will it cost. And again, these are areas that, uh, that we're more than capable of helping you with. The background um, is that effectively, it would be no surprise to you, the state pension itself is under an awful lot of pressure. Um, and they've tried various initiatives. In fact, I was, probably, I was in this hotel probably about 12 years ago whenever stakeholder pensions were being launched, uh, and that was at that stage deemed to be the solution to the pension crisis. That hasn't worked. The problem is that people are living longer. Um, today's national insurance contributions are being paid out to today's pensioners. The sums don't add up, and in the absence of a large dot of cash, um, basically, it was something else that's had to be done. The government has tried the carrot approach, they're now trying the stick approach, uh, following the model of the States and Australia as well. So we would welcome these reforms, we would welcome these changes because at the end of the day you can get bogged down in the technicalities of pension. But the idea and the hope is that whenever people retire they have enough income to enable them to enjoy a reasonable standard of living, um, which is what it's all about. So this new bit of legislation is uh, where, where we are at this moment in time and that the, the government uh, have decided to apply the stick. So what will happen is that uh, all employers will have numerous obligations in terms of compliance, in terms of reporting and in terms of communication. Uh, but fear not, help is at hand. We are here to guide you through the process. Uh, and as independent financial advisors, we'll research the market to find which solution is going to be best to your individual businesses. But it is very much um, a journey. Uh, there are various steps in the process. Um, the government will, will write out, or the pensions regulator will write out and advise you of your requirements. Uh, as advisors, we get updates on the legislation on a regular basis, and we find it difficult to keep ahead of, the, of what's going on. I suspect it's going to be quite difficult for employers, so I would encourage you to engage with financial advisors going forward. Uh, it's the key to uh, the communi communication that comes through is that the pensions regulator will advise you of your staging date. And the staging date is effectively the date from which this will affect your business. Um, that staging date is based, uh, based on your, the size of your employee workforce and your PAYE reference. And we can help you if you haven't received any, any communication already um, to let you find out exactly when that date is. But the staging date is the date from which you will be subject to all this new uh, regulation, reporting and payment of pension contributions. The reality is that there's going to be a spike in the staging dates, so there's going to be a mad rush uh, for people in, in the SME marketplace um, looking to get such arrangements in place. So I would suggest that you plan and start planning. Your systems will have to be affected from your staging date, so it's important that you have, uh, have a plan of attack going up towards that, getting the data together, testing the data, uh, agreeing communications with staff, etc. But it's something again that we can work with you on. But I would suggest that you know it makes sense to get your ducks in a row, or it doesn't have to be ducks. It could be any animal that's capable of being controlled. Um, but uh, basically, have a plan uh, and that you know exactly what it is that you're going to do next. So from your staging date, again, there will be requirements on you, again, based on the age and the earnings of your employees, whether you have to directly put money into a pension for them, whether you have to put a contribution in for them if they ask, um, various criteria, again, and this is a moving, the goalposts are moving with this all the time. But again, we will work with you to decide you know, which employees fit into which category and which communication they need to receive, dependent on that uh, sectionalization. You may well have a scheme in place already, which may well tick all the boxes in terms of being capable of auto-enrolling. 
and also having the contribution level which are at least as high as the government dictate. The auto enrolment is really the key to this new legislation because what it means is that everybody from their staging date will find themselves in a pension, whereas um, the government hope is that through inertia people will find themselves in pensions, whereas at the moment they are finding themselves not in a pension through inertia. So the key is that people will end up uh, in a pension scheme um, as being the course of least resistance. So again, we can help you look at the scheme, any schemes that you have already, or steer you in the right direction as to which model is going to suit your business best. From the staging date, you will be required to make contributions which will be phased in on an increasing basis. So ultimately by 2018, for example, um, somebody on a salary of £20,000, just short of £100 a month, would need to go into a pension pot for them. That is a cost implication for your business, so again, we have access to modelers which will give you an indication of uh, what the, the effect will be on your own particular business in pounds and pence going forward, uh, and that will enable you to plan to see what way you want to approach it best. In terms of communication, um, this is the key that you, in terms of the planning process, you need to write out to people beforehand because people get a bit iffy if you start taking money off their salary without telling them why. Um, so it's a matter of communicating these changes uh, up front, letting them know what is happening, when it's happening and what their options are. Uh, and what I would say to people is that your know, pension as a component of an employee benefit package can be a very valuable ele element. I mentioned that £96 a month would go into a pension for somebody on 20,000. That isn't going to provide them with anything near the sort of level of income and in retirement if they didn't have anything else. So it's a matter of embracing pension planning, using it as a tool, um, using it as part of the employee benefit package to uh, reward, recruit and retain staff going forward. Because I think it would be remiss of us not to encourage people to put money into pension because the longer you leave it, the harder it becomes to, to uh, achieve that standard of living that you would wish whenever you want to put your feet up and do all the things that you can then do because you don't have to work anymore. The pension regulator, again, uh, will be keeping a very close eye on things. Um, I mentioned there are requirements in terms of communications and contributions. You will have had the change with RTI in terms of payroll. Similarly, the money will be going directly to the product providers, and if it doesn't, alarm bells will start to ring. Capita have been recruited to oversee the compliance of this, um, and they've been paid a lot of money to oversee the compliance of this, so they may well be looking for a sacrificial lamb or two along the way uh, to prove their value going forward. But again, we are there. Uh, to work with you and as long as we can get a plan put together and everything is done when it should be, there's nothing to worry. Nothing to worry about as long as you've got a safe set of hands uh, at your side. You'll be required to register your scheme, you'll be re required to re-register your scheme. Again, there's a lot of detail which is probably uh, you know, better saved for a, an individual meeting at, at uh, any stage. But you can see there that there are various penalties uh, that are possible, which are fairly scary. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're meant to have the shock effect, and certainly that is what's happening. So there's a, a list of the various things that you need to do. Um, and I say you need to do, it's not optional. Um, it will affect all employers. Um, again, on the basis that the government wants to find people in pensions rather than not in pensions. But if you're going to do it, you might as well do it well uh, and make sure that you can use a pension as a valuable tool going forward. So what we can do at Hughes Financial, again, we have a team of highly qualified, professional, ethical financial advisors. Uh, delighted with the team that I have around me. Uh, many of us have specialisation in the employee benefit marketplace and the business protection uh, marketplace. Um, Karen Morgan and myself, again, particularly working in that area. Um, the, the bar has been raised in terms of qualifications and hopefully within the financial services industry, we will see uh, an improved quality going forward. But certainly we have got the level of qualification and more and the experience uh, to be confident to work in these areas and work with uh, yourselves going forward. 
Uh, we're happy to meet with you at your place of business or anywhere at the, the Hughes Insurance Network uh, throughout Northern Ireland. Um, commercial colleagues, uh, David and Derek in the room as well, uh, able to offer very competitively priced comprehensive offerings in terms of commercial insurance and are the fastest, <clears throat> fastest growing commercial insurance brokerage in Northern Ireland. So between, if we're putting a, talking about putting a whole package together, there's certainly a lot of boxes that can be ticked through the combined resources in the room today. It's nice to be able to support local businesses, you know, as, again, as a team of financial advisors. A lot of the local financial advisors would be smaller practices. If you're looking at bigger size practices, they tend to be uh, national. Uh, so again, we would be one of the largest locally owned businesses going forward. And you know, in terms of work, you know, with your staff and with your business colleagues, I'm sure you'll agree that Hughes is a very strong, comprehensive brand locally in the marketplace. You may be working with advisors already. Um, if that's the case, there's never any harm in getting a second opinion, and we'd be more than delighted to do that. If you're not taking advice already, I'm certainly happy to uh, discuss your requirements with Morgan, Karen, or myself. Um, going forward, we'd be delighted to have a chat with you to see if we can help. But as I say, certainly a second opinion is never any harm, even if you are in the receipt of advice already. So in financial services tradition, we have the, the health check uh, covering all of the um, compliance credentials.